Halloween, the one night of the year when witches, goblins, and other creatures of the beyond are permitted to roam the earth. Welcome. Welcome. Please, be very quiet. Halloween is near. The ghosts and goblins are appearing here, there, everywhere. Before this night is over, they will be right here, in this very room. But first, we must make sure you are ready for the witch who rides on the broomstick, the ghost who floats eerily in the dark and the other events soon to unfold. Now, are all of you sitting in a circle? Good. Be very quiet and listen. According to the ancient parchment that has been handed down from the bygone past, there must be a candle burning in the center of the circle. No other lights must be on in the room. Be sure that there are no other lights on in the room except for the one burning candle. Now we begin. The host will take the magic witch's wand, hold it straight out in front of him, and when I say go, make three large circles in the air. Okay. Now hold out the witch's wand. Get ready to make the three large circles. Here we go. One circle. Two circles, three circles. There, it is done. By using the magic witch's wand and performing the ancient mystic ritual, you have summoned the creatures of Halloween night to be here with us. They will listen along with us to our ghost story. Perhaps you will see them. Perhaps feel them. But make no mistake, they are here. Soon it will be Halloween. Parties will be given everywhere in the land. Our story for this Halloween takes place at just such a party. A group of youngsters have just started out on a scavenger hunt. They have one hour to find six Halloween articles. Where can they find six Halloween items in just one hour? There is only one place. The empty house on Haunted Hill. We join the group of youngsters as they are about to cross a vacant lot on their way to the haunted house. Well, well come on. Let's, let's get it over with. I wish we hadn't started all this. It will be over soon. Let's walk faster. Oh, look! Look there! What's the matter? There was something in that attic window. I didn't see anything. Neither did I. It looked like a white form or a white shape moving in, the sh in front of the window. But it's probably just your imagination. Let's keep our, our eyes peeled for any more strange things. We're almost there. What's that? It sounded like a wolf. There it is again. Maybe it's a werewolf. Probably a dog down the street howling. Yeah. Well, here we are. Be careful of these stairs. They look weak. Push. I've got 
goose bumps. So will I. I'll be quiet. I don't want to go in. Okay, you can wait while we go in. No, no, I'll go in, I'll go in. Well, since I saw the owls in the attic, I'll get the three owl feathers. James, you get the old mailbox over there on the wall. Lorraine, you find a handful of cobwebs somewhere. And Barbara, you won't have any trouble getting an old doorknob from one of the doors. It has to be brass. Yes, Barbara, it has to be brass. Uh, Janice, you like cats, so you get some fur off of one of the black cats around here. I like cats, but I don't like black cats, especially at Halloween time. Okay, now. We all know what to get. Let's, let's go inside. That sound came from inside the house. I thought it came from across the open field. There's no large dogs around here that I know of. Let's get what we need and then get out of here. Jim, open the door. Oh, it's dark in here. What a big place. Look how high the ceiling is. Look at that big staircase. I've never seen such big windows. And those drapes. Look at them. They look as if they're about to crumble into dust. Gee, that old couple must have had a lot of money. Let's walk very carefully now. Let's leave right now. We're here. We might just as well get to the came out. Come on. Hey, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. What, kitty? I don't see a cat. Neither do I, but we need some black cat fur, don't we? So I'm looking for a cat. Did you all hear that? It came from upstairs. I thought so, too. Let's not find out. Let's go home. Maybe the wind knocked over something. It's quiet now. Ah! What's the matter, Barbara? Look! Look there! Look at what? That picture! The eyes in that picture move! What picture? The picture on the wall. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I thought the picture was looking at me. Then I walked a little bit. And the eyes followed me. I'm feeling the painting, and it's just a picture. The eyes are painted on the picture. Barbara, you must have imagined it. Maybe so, but I was so sure. Oh, look. Now what? A brass doorknob, just what I'm looking for. That's a good idea. The rest of us better get looking for our things, too. I'll go out on the front porch and pull that old mailbox off the wall. Hey, James, you dropped the mailbox? James, can't you hear us? He's just trying to scare us. James, speak up. Let's go out and see what happens. You girls wait here. Carl and I will go out on the front porch. There's nothing here. He's gone. There's the mailbox on the porch. Hey, James, where are you? James. James, if this is a gag, it's gone far enough. Jim, Carl, come back in here. We heard something upstairs. What did you hear? It sounded like footsteps walking, in, and then they stopped. Then there was a struggle. Then the footsteps started again. It might have been James, but we must go upstairs and see. Didn't you see him? No. We found the old mailbox on the floor, but no trace of James. Well, here we are at the stairs. Let's go up. Don't go so fast. I don't want to get lost in this house. These stairs look as if they were rotting away. The stairs are so dusty that we leave our footprints when we walk. Say that again. I said, where we walk up, we leave footprints in the dust. Then how do you explain that? Look there. <gasps> footprints up ahead on the stairs. Did any of you walk up these stairs? We've all been together. None of us have been up here. And look at the shape of these footprints. Carl, what would you say they look like? Hmm. Uh, they've got three big toes with with claws or nails at the end of each one. More like a wolf. Like a wolf's footprints. And they've just been made, too. If what made those footprints is doing that howling, then it must be a wolf. There was a noise upstairs. That's the same noise we heard earlier. 
Come on. There's nothing here. Just a long corridor with lots of doors. Where do the wolf's footprints go? Well, as far as I can see, they go down to the corridor about midway and... Uh, and what? They vanish. Which door are they coming from? Let's tiptoe down the hall and see if we can find out. It's coming from inside this room. Try opening the door. I'm ready to run. So am I. Go on, open the door. Okay, be quiet, everybody. What do you see, Jim? The room's empty. Who could have made the sound of rattling chains? Look, at there's some chains on the floor. Well, that's the sound, all right. But what caused them to rattle? Maybe it was a ghost. I'm beginning to believe that this place is really haunted. We'd better leave while we still can. Lorraine's right. We must call the police to come and find James. Good idea. Let's go. Hey, who closed the door? I didn't. I didn't. It's it's not. It's not. I don't know. It's locked. Here, let me try it. It won't budge. How will we get out? There's no windows in this room. Let's holler for help. There's no one around here for miles. It's solid oak. It'd take a bulldozer to break it down. Listen, listen. There's something outside in the hall. What did you hear? It sounded like rustling cloth. Shh. I hear it, too. It, it's coming near. Everybody get up against the far wall, crouch down, and be very quiet. Shh, quiet now. Do you still hear it? It's getting closer. Oh, oh, I wish I were home. What are we going to do? It's right outside the door. That door's locked. We're safe in here. Listen, it's at the door. Oh, it's, it's trying to get in. Don't say a word. your ghost. Oh, oh, look, it's a man. man. Yes, Sonny, it's a man. He's Fingers Alden, a notorious counterfeiter. We've had our eyes on him for a long time. Okay, Joe, we've got him. Radio headquarters has sent a patrol car. We've been watching this old place for several months, and Fingers Alden has been using this old house to print counterfeit money in. Mr. and Mrs. Fletch have been in a rest home upstate. Now, this crook capitalized on the idea that the old couple disappeared mysteriously. He started a rumor that the house was haunted. He was the one who made those frightening sounds to scare away anyone who might have come around. Yeah, and it would have worked if those kids wouldn't have come snooping around. Then where's Jane? Here I am. I was pulling off the old mailbox on the front porch when something black was pulled over my head. Next thing I knew, I was tied up and lying on the floor of the attic with a gag in my mouth. What was the purpose of trying to scare us away? We never would have found that crook in this big old house. Well, his printing room was well hidden, but he couldn't take the chance of anyone discovering it. Then we did see something at the window as we walked across the field. Yeah, that was me in this here ghost outfit. Then it was your eyes behind the picture. This old house is honeycombed with secret passages. The picture was one way he could spy on anybody that was brave enough to come into the house. Well, we found the rattling change, but, but what caused that wolf howl? Look in this closet. It's a record player. There's a record on the turntable. Play the record.
Well, I'll be. A record of a howling wolf. I wish I had a record like that. Boy, could I have some fun. <laughs> the wolf footprints and the dust on the stairs. How were they made? Well, they were made with this long pole with the imitation wolf feet on the end of it. It was a sweet setup, and it would have worked, too. Hope you Snoopy kids are satisfied. Your counterfeiting days are over, Fingers. Come on, you're going downstairs. Well, <laughs> it looks like that we saw the mystery of the empty house on Haunted Hill. There'll be no more ghost activities in this place. Boy, will we have a story to tell the gang back at the party. Oh, we've forgotten about the party. Is the hour up yet? Oh, we're five minutes late. Oh, it won't win the prize. This has been the most exciting Halloween party I've ever been to. And on top of it all, we discovered a ghost. <laughs> yes. The legend of the haunted house is over. We have solved the mystery of the empty house on Haunted Hill. <laughs> yeah. What we're here studying medicine for, Victor, is to postpone death as long as possible. I wonder if there's another way, Cleval. I've been reading some of the ancient medical authorities like Albertus Magnus. Ah, uh, which doctor? Oh, no, no. They didn't have our knowledge and our instruments, but they were intelligent men. Combine their ideas with what we know today, and the result may be a new way to defeat death. Come, come, Victor. Are we really going to play or not? Of course I'm going to play. What a fine way to study medicine. What? Elizabeth, <laughs> what cloud did you drop from? Aunt Harlan had to drive up to English class for a few days, and she asked me to come with it. Elizabeth, darling, it's heavenly to see you again. <laughs> when love walks in the door, back down, flies out the window. <laughs> see you both later. Of course, of all. Oh, my darling. How's everyone in Geneva? Uh, how's William? Your little brother is an absolute charmer. The most beautiful child in the whole city. I hope I can be home for his 10th birthday. Well, why not? You'll be graduated by then, dear. Just think. My victor will be Dr. Frankenstein. Elizabeth. I won't be coming home after my graduation. Thank you. We'll have to postpone our wedding a few months longer, Elizabeth. There's something I must do first. There's something I must do for you. Well, I'll do the over I did that summer after my graduation. I don't want to know. You're my only friend. You must listen. I went up into the mountains alone. I had stumbled onto a combining of ancient and modern theories which I breathed and was certain could create a living creature. It had become an obsession with me. I had to build with my own hands a human form and imbue life in it. During those months, I devoted myself day and night the most arduous, most revolting work that a scientist has ever undertaken. I began to put together a creature of human form. I found the minuteness of the parts a great handicap. So I resolved, for the ease of working, to make the creature a giant, more than eight feet in height, so that the component parts, arteries, veins, muscle tendons, would be easier to work with. During those months, Cleval, my hands performed deeds which the hands of men should never perform. The work was almost done. The huge, uncrowed monster lay grotesquely on my work table. I had filled its gigantic frame with blood and planned on the following day to subject it to the electric shocks, which would activate its nervous system, make it a living, breathing creature. I sank to my couch exhausted fell into a deep sleep. During the night, I heard the wind rise. It was disturbed literally by crashes of thunder and lightning flashes along the mountainside. Once, after a very near stroke of lightning seemed to electrify the air in my sleeping chamber, I thought I heard a sound from my laboratory. Then, 
Did I dream this, or did it really happen? The curtains around my bed were parted, and I saw the monster. Its yellow skin, its unblinking eyes, the dry, papery lips moved. When I awoke in daylight, I laughed at what I thought had been a frightful dream. But at the door of my laboratory, I smelled the pungent ozone fumes which accompany a strong electric shock. To my horror, I realized that a near bolt of lightning during the night could have infused life into the monster, even as I had planned it in my controlled experiment. I flung open the laboratory door. My nightmare had happened. The monster was gone. For months, Rebel, I searched for the creature. There are a few vague rumors, unconfirmed reports of a hideous shadow roaming the upper mountain valleys. Nothing to go on. Nothing to go on. We can't move up this search. My poor Victor, we've been so worried about you. I'm all right, darling, now that I'm with you. You're so thin, Victor. Where have you been all these wretched months? Trapped months. Traveling, Elizabeth. It's mine. I want nothing you would understand. Oh, no. No, no more travel from your heart. Yes. Oh, darling, how happy is my old life? Happy is all my old life. Huh? I'll set up practice. All right. Oh, come in. Dr. Frankenstein. It's me. What do you wish, sir? I'm the prefect of police. I have some distressing news. Sir, what is it, sir? Your brother, William has been killed. No! How did it happen? An accident? No. No accident. He was strangled to death. But he's only a child, ten years old. So tell me, exactly what happened? It was just growing dark, Doctor. The children were playing hide-and-seek together. Little William hid himself in a grove of bushes by the edge of the lake. There was a scream... But when they reached the child, the light had been choked out. Oh, how horrible. Officer, may I borrow a gun from you, sir, yes. for only an hour, uh, and for my own protection? I can probably arrange it. Victor, what are you going to do? Where are you going? Find my brother's murderer. <laughs> I can also destroy. Stand back, monster. You breathe your last breath. Die! Die! Let us die! Your little sister cannot hurt me. Dear Lord, have 
forgive me. I beseech you. How can I destroy this thing? Before it destroys me. like himself. But a woman, good Lord. The thing was lonely. Nowhere from no one could it receive friendship or affection. It demands that I build another monster or a mate. I refused, and it threatened me. It swore a frightful oath. If you will not build me a companion, I will destroy everything you love, and I will be with you on your wedding day. What could I do? Elizabeth and I were engaged. Only a few weeks remained before we would have been married. I thought for the sake of her safety that I, I must do what the monster asked. So I climbed up to my dismal mountain laboratory where I had conducted the first experiment. I went into the workroom, and I set about the disgusting labor of creating another giant, a woman. And the task was half done. While the ghoulish torso lay incomplete on my work table, I paused to wonder. Would the fiend keep its promise? Would the monster cease from murder and destruction? Or would I be turning two demons loose upon the world? Two creatures which would breed children as hideous as themselves. In a few generations, these monsters born of my hand could extinguish civilization on this planet. Perhaps wipe out the human race. I couldn't do this thing. I gathered together the poor pieces of my half-made creature, and I flung them from the ledge of a high cliff into a nearby lake. But as I did these things, I, I knew I was being watched. Somewhere in that forest of pine tree shadows, somewhere among the moonless crags, I knew the two eyes were following my every movement. As I packed my few belongings for the trip back home to Geneva, back to my precious Elizabeth, back to the little wedding chapel where we would be made husband and wife, one terrible memory kept echoing through my mind. I will be with you on your wedding day and Victor, darling, what's troubling you? Nothing, my sweet. Nothing, really. Oh, this has been the happiest day of my life. And by far the most important. We are married. Do you realize that, dearest? Actually married. I hope that all our days together will be as happy as this one has been. Why shouldn't they be? What earthly thing could mar our happiness? Oh, Elizabeth, if you knew. If you only knew. Victor, what's the matter? Light a lamp, dear, quickly. It's almost dark here. We must have light. Afraid of the night, my sweet? Desperately afraid of this night. Elizabeth, until the sun rises again, you must not leave my sight. 
this great danger, darling. Oh, Victor, you're overwrought. I must not leave you alone, not for a single instant. This is the new bride. You have no privacy, then? Oh, come, Victor. Kiss me farewell. No. For five minutes only. We've not even unpacked our bags. I must have time to arrange my walk. Elizabeth, don't go, darling. Don't. For five minutes only. Elizabeth. My wife's murderer. Doctor. You're a magistrate, police officer. Arrest me. Take me to prison where I belong. Doctor, I can understand your emotional distress, but we know this dreadful night's happenings are no fault of yours. How do you know? Hear me, sir. Hear my confession. I have created a monster, built it with my own hands, imbued it with life. But this demon I created has no soul. It devotes itself to one fiendish purpose, to destroy all things that I love. And would love me. Sir, send your police without in full force to scour the mountainside for this monster. It must be found. It must be found! Oh, poor fellow, he's out of his head with grief. You think I'm raving? I was never more sane in my life, sir. I tell you, I tell you, I've created an indestructible monster. Doctor, you must rest. Rest and sleep will make you feel better. You think I am mad? You, you are the mad one. Frankenstein, you are in 
my power forever. Hear me, all living creatures within sound of my voice. Remember what I say. I warn you, the monster I created is still at liberty, roaming the dark places of the night. Beware of him, for with one silent stroke of his finger, he can crush out your life. Of all things, do not speak my name. For the sound of the syllables Frankenstein makes the anger rise in the monster's brain. He would say by name, he may think you a friend of Frankenstein. His hairy hands will close about your throat as they did of that with little William and Elizabeth. Poor Clavar. I beg you, beware of the monster lurking in the shadows. And if God wills it, speak one prayer for the most wretched, lonely man who has ever walked this planet. Victor Franken.